Hey, what's this video about? Welcome to the tutorial video. In this video, we'll explore how to bring Reillusion characters powered by Convey to the browser using 3.js and React. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to our tutorial on integrating Reillusion characters into 3.js. With Convey, you can add AI functionalities to your Reillusion characters, enabling them to talk to you or other characters in your game perceive the world around them, and perform really cool actions, making it easy to create your own AI-powered metaverse running in the browser. In this tutorial, we'll prepare a Reillusion character in the Character Creator tool. Then we'll bring it into Blender, and then finally connect it to a mine that we create on the Convey website. We'll finish up by integrating it all into code that can be deployed. Let's begin by importing our character in Reillusion's Character Creator 4. We're ready to export, so go to the Edit menu and select Export, FBX, clothed character, and then select Blender. Next, we'll select Mesh under FBX options, and then remove the check mark for embed textures. Now we can click the Export button and pick the folder where your project is located. We'll need some animations, so let's explore the animation section in the left column of Reillusion. For lip sync, there will be two animations required. One is the idle, and the other is for speaking. Let's use the search bar and type in talk. Select the standtalk.imotion animation and drag it onto our character. Click the play button below the character to test the animation. That looks pretty good. We'll export this as well, so once again, navigate to export, FBX, close the character, and then blender. This time we'll select Motion under the FBX options and select Current Animation, and then deselect First Frame in Bind Pose. Now click Export and save it as Talk to your project folder. Now we just need to add an idle animation. Let's search for idle in the search bar and select any of the idle animations listed and drag it onto the character. Once again, we'll use Export, FBX, Clothed Character, and we'll do all the same things as the previous animation and save it to your project folder as idle. We're done exporting all our files from Reillusion, so we'll now check everything in Blender. Inside Blender, we'll prepare to import our character files. First, we'll need to install a couple of plugins. These can be found on GitHub under cc underscore blender underscore tools by Soupday. You'll find these files under Releases in the right column. The first one is CC Blender Tool, and the other one is Baking Add-on. After downloading these files, you can install them in the Add-on section of Blender's Preferences. Make sure to enable them before you leave the Preferences section. To show the menu, you'll need to press N as in Nancy, and then select the Pipeline tab. Next, click Import Character and select Camilla from your project folder. Once the character is imported, it should look something like this. This format is not compatible with web, so you'll need to convert the materials by selecting Basic, followed by Rebuild Basic Materials, and then click the Rebuild Basic Materials button. Now we'll select the Bake tab and click on the Bake folder. Here we'll need to create a Bake folder in our project. Once that's set, we'll click the Bake button to bake the files. After all the files have baked, we'll select the character's hair. In the settings, we'll change the Blend Mode and Shadow Mode to Alpha Clip. We'll do the same for the eyebrows. Now let's select Clothing and select Alpha Clip for Blend Mode and Opaque for Shadow Mode. Once these are updated, let's convert the file for use on the web. To do this, we'll go to Export GLTF 2.0 and then deselect the Animation option in the right panel. Then open the Data section to ensure that Compression is selected. We'll then save this as a .glb file in our project folder. Let's validate that our file is working in the GLTF viewer. 
As you can see, everything looks fine. Next, we'll go back into Blender and open our animations. Clear the current project and let's import our animations. These include the talk and idle animations that we created earlier. Here you can see the animations. We'll delete the unnecessary items from the collection. We just need the armature and pose. Next, we'll need to adjust the timelines to match what the imported animations require. In this case, we'll change it to 1100. Now let's look at the dope sheet down in the lower left corner of Blender. Change it to the action editor. Here we can rename this to the animation that we are editing, idle. Then we'll press the push down button. Now we'll add the talk animation by importing it in the same way. As you can see, it imported the entire model. Just select this and delete the hierarchy. Let's go back to the action editor and you can see that we have our talking animation. We'll rename this to talking and once again press the push down button. If you expand the hierarchy, you'll now see that we have both of the animations. Once again, we'll use the GLTF 2.0 export option. Expand the data hierarchy to select compression before you save the file to your project. This completes the basic skeleton setup for our model. Now we'll move on to set up the brain, powered by Convey. Let's get started by creating our Convey character. Head over to convey.com and sign in so that you are redirected to your dashboard. Click on Create a New Character and then give it a name. Next, choose a voice. We'll pick Calm US Feminine Voice for this character. Now for the fun part. Give the character a backstory. We'll say that Camilla is a researcher and space explorer. When you're ready, click Create Character. Once it's done loading, you can talk to your new friend. You could give your character more personality by selecting from a variety of characteristics or providing a custom catchphrase. If you want to fine tune your character's personality, head over to the Personalities Trait tab and use the dials to make them as feisty or agreeable as you wish. When you're happy with your creation, head back to the Character Description tab and copy the character's ID and your API key. We'll need them both to set up the Convey Web SDK. So let's now set up the required code. For the code, the dependencies we'll need are React 3 Fiber, React 3 Dre, Leva for debugging, Lodash for throttle, and the 3.js package. For more details, you can visit our GitHub page under 3.js-world-tutorial. Here you'll find the main branch and the tutorial branches. There's a link provided in the description of this video. Now let's create the React environment. To set that up, we'll use npm create vite at latest. Add a period as shown here to bootstrap your React project. To create a 3D space that runs in the browser, we'll be using React 3 Fiber, which is an adaptation of React. Check out the documentation on Fiber to find out more about how to use it and to see some interesting examples. Okay, let's start building our project. Type npm run dev to run the project on localhost. So this is our environment setup. As you can see, it creates a 3D space running in the browser. The setup includes a file called app.jsx. This includes the definitions for the keyboard controls that you can see here. The file also includes the experience component, which sets up the gravity for the Rapier Physics engine. So this is a wrapper for around anywhere where we want to define physics properties. Here you can see some definitions for ambient and directional lighting. The sky and the grid components come from the React 3 Dre library. This creates the sky box and the grid component that you can see here. 
This rigid body will be used to create a fixed platform. It includes five cuboid colliders. These can be turned off by removing the debug argument, as shown here. Now we'll comment out orbit controls and enable the convey FPS control. As you can see, now we're able to move around the space as in a first person shooter game. Okay, now we can add our characters. We'll add Camilla first. We'll need to convert the GLB files using GLTF React 3 Fiber. There's a link to this tool and the setup files in the description below. This will provide some boilerplate code for mapping out the nodes and materials. Copy and save this code into your local folder. In this case, we'll put it in our public folder and then add the appropriate folder and file name to your Camilla function. So from that file, we'll extract the nodes, materials, and scene. On this next line, we do the same for the animations. Next, we'll extract the client from props, which is passed from the app.jsx file. To get the client, you'll have to use the useConveyClient hook, which takes an argument for your API key and character ID. We'll also use the use animations hook from React3.js and we'll extract actions and mixer, which we'll use for mixing our animations. This function shows how we fade in an animation and once it's done, we then fade it out. In this section, we're changing the animation based on the state of the client. So if the character is talking, we set the animation to talking. If it's not talking, we set it to idle. Next, you can set up lip sync by using the use lip sync function for reillusion characters. This takes in the client, character reference, nodes, and scene. You can also use use head tracking, which takes in client and nodes. This enables the character to face the camera whenever she starts talking. You can also import crowd characters from the Reillusion website. They have some examples that you can download for free, like this one. To grab some animations, just head over to Motion and you can look for animations to download. Once you're finished downloading the files, go through the same process that we did for Camilla. So in this case, we end up with a max.glb file for the character and maxanimations.glb for the animations. If that's successful, you should see something like this. These characters have the advantage of being pretty lightweight so they can be used directly on the web. And they also include morph targets so that the lip sync function should just work. If you'd like to try RPM or Ready Player Me characters, 
you'll just have to make sure that you download the GLV files with morph targets. Check the documentation for how to do this. For RPM characters, you'll need to use the useRPMLipSync.jsx file. Here you can see we have the same environment, but now with a Ready Player Me character. Hey, let's wrap up the video. Sure, it's time to conclude the video. Thanks for watching, and remember to check out our description for links to the products and resources mentioned in the video. Feel free to reach out to us on Discord with any questions or email us at support at convey.com.